Hello friends and welcome back. Today I am so excited to be a part of the Encouragement Card Hop and this was brought to you by Courtney, Mary, and Jen. These guys are so, so awesome. Been following them for a long time. They make beautiful cards and projects and I will leave links below to their um, YouTube channels along with the next person on the hop for you to go visit. Great way for you to meet some awesome card makers out there that you may have never seen before. And uh, don't forget to watch the other video uh, from Courtney that will have all the cards with people that didn't make uh, videos. Anyway, I'm going to be using Pink and Main's uh, Sun Kiss Greeting and Hello Sunshine and I've already colored them up. I used my Spectrum Tri-Blend markers. Um, getting used to them. Still not great with it but I think I'm getting a little bit better. I cut them all out and now we're going to start making our card base. You guys know I've been trying to figure out scene cards. I want to make better um, scene cards. So I took two old card designs and I'm showing you how to do it right here and I kind of put them together to make this um, I just think it's a really cool base for a scene. So you're going to start with a paper that is 7 by 10. And right here you're going to start 1 inch to 6 inches. Then you flip your card over and go 6 inches back to the 1. So if you follow that ruler, you're going to take it to the 1 inch. So you've got a 1 inch on either side of your paper. And then you're going to take it 1 inch up from the bottom to 6 inches. And then back down the other side. And now you're going to use your scoreboard. And we're going to start scoring. And this is basically taking, making a step card and a bridge card. And we're going to combine them and we're going to make a step bridge card. So we're going to do one score line at one inch, one at two inches. And you're only going up to your cut line. The next one you're going to do at six inches. And right here I'm trying to figure out the best way to get to the five. You'll see in a second. So just remember up to your cut line right there. And now I want to do one at five inches, but I only want it to go in between the two cut lines. So if you can see here what I'm doing is I just use my ruler to find that five inch line right there and to score only right there in between the cut lines. And then the six inch one goes all the way across. Then you're going to turn your paper around so that you can do the same thing on the other side and you just want to go nine and then eight. And then that way you're even on both sides. So you've got your one, your two, your six, and then the five on the inside of the cut lines. Turn it over, and you're going to do 9 and 8. And that's it. So this is how you make the step part of your card. Um, and now what I'm going to do is take that square die up in the corner, and I'm going to cut out a frame. So right here is going to be the opening, almost like a little stage, which, by the way, that would be a totally cute card to do with this type of card. But you'll see. Anyway, so we're going to take this out. I'm going to run it through my machine. And no worries if you don't have a machine that's big enough um, for this particular card size. You can totally use a craft knife and just cut out a square. Um, and then you're going to keep that extra little piece that you cut off um, when you cut down your paper. So just kind of keep that off to the side because we're going to use that. And we're going to fold the step card just like just like you would do any other card that's a step card. And you're going to make your mountain fold, your valley fold, and then your mountain fold at the top, two mountain folds actually. And then if you'll notice, there's an extra fold right here. And that's going to make almost like a stage. So there's your stage. And I know it looks a little floppy right now, but once we add the bridge in and put all our stuff in, it's a very sturdy card. And the dimensions for this card make it exactly 5 by 7 so it will fit into a 5 by 7 envelope, no problem, so you can mail it if you'd like to. Um, you can also adjust these, obviously you can adjust these uh, numbers for whatever size card you want to make, but this one particularly makes 5 by 7 So let's get started putting together our scene. So I took some, um, that's the Nina Desert Storm used my distress inks and some white acrylic paint to create sand and the edge is I used my Elizabeth craft uh, scene building dies and you see the sand on my little stamped images it kind of has like little waves so I thought it would be kind of cute to make the sand kind of match it so that's why I used the cloud dies to create the sand I also used a cloud stencil to create the clouds in the background this is a shiny piece of blue paper which I thought would be really cute ocean. So I'm taking my sand and I'm just peeking it out across the top to make like it look like there's water off in the background. And it's nice and shiny so it shimmers a lot when, you, when the light hits it. So it definitely looks like water back there. Now I'm just going to figure out where to place it on my back, my back panel. So this is kind of how this is going to go. So it's three layers here which makes this an awesome scene building card without a whole lot of work. 
I know it seems, maybe it seems like there's a lot, but really it's not. Once you make the first one, the rest of them go really fast. I know because I made like four of these now because I'm just in love with these things. Had some birthdays coming up and I really, really love the design of this card. So I made a whole bunch of them. Anyway, so I've attached my back piece and now I'm just figuring out where my second layer is going to go. And I want to make sure you can see from the front when you have your card sitting um, that you can see all the way to the back because you want to see all three layers. So I'm just going to make a mark. And I am going to reinforce my sand, even though this is really thick cardstock, only because I want to make sure everything is nice and sturdy and it stands up well um, when you're not touching the card. So I'm just going to attach that little extra piece that I cut off when I made my card base. That's the, because it's, you normally have 8 by, what's that, 8 and a half by 11. Well, I made it a 7 by 10, so that's that, just that extra little bit. And this is where I'm going to attach it right along that score line in the back. So you just open up your card, flip it over, and place it right along that score line where the first step is. And now I'm just going to kind of speed through and attach all of my little scene building pieces. And because this is an encouragement hop, the stamp set had a build your dreams. So I just cut it out with a, a you know, a little word die thing there. Not word die, what do you call it? Sentiment die. And popped it up on a couple of sticks and then molded the build your dreams around the banner die there. And uh, just attached it to the back of my candle, my candle, my castle. I can talk. It's because the video is going so fast that I think I need to talk faster, but I don't. So I'm just going to pop up my little characters and kind of place them. I'm trying to place them kind of higher than the sandcastle because I didn't want it to look like the sandcastle was like big enough for them to practically live in. So I was trying to bring them up a little bit higher. And then plus the other sand is going to go right on that front panel. And then we're going to decorate that as well. So we want to be able to see all three layers when you set your card down. So I'm just going to put some tape at the bottom. And then I'm going to figure out exactly how high up I want this layer of sand to go. So you can still see the back. I know this angle isn't the greatest because my camera is overhead. And this is a card that's best viewed from the front. But you get the idea. I mean, it, it really, once you make one, you guys will love it. It's so so fun to make and the scene building is so easy with this because your layers are already there so it's just one two three and it's awesome so here's the rest of my pieces i'm gonna place my little girl with her umbrella my little boy eating ice cream i love this little crab i love pink and mean i really 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 love their dyes and their their little characters are so sick and adorable so it's really easy to build scenes with these and the spectrum markers little bit of a learning curve because I mean you have the three layer three different colors um, that are supposed to blend but they blend a little too well so sometimes you can't get very much definition there so you have to go back with your darkest color after you've blended them all and kind of re um, do your shadows there your height your, your areas where you want it to really pop but I think I'm getting it it's not too bad I still, I love my Copics, I really do, and I did have to supplement in with some of the colors that I didn't have with my Copic markers, because the other thing about the tri blends is there's only 24 of them, so there aren't a ton of colors yet, hopefully that's going to be changed soon, and they will add some more to that, but until then, I just kind of supplement with my Copic markers, it's a really good way to just take something and go, because I have a little bit of time, like on my lunches and whatnot, to do a little bit of coloring, just to just relax and goof around. So um, carrying around 24 markers is a lot easier than carrying around how, how many Copic markers are there now? Like 480. <laughs> so um, definitely once you figure it out, it's it's a good travel companion. I'm just going to add my little starfish here just to kind of finish out my frame. And that's pretty much it. This is it. So it sits up nicely on the shelf. You can see when you're looking at it from the front, you can see all three layers just perfectly. Um, here's what it is from the bottom. The sides, like I said, it closes up. It's into a 5 by 7 envelope. It is such a fun card to make and I'm super excited that I got to share this idea in such a great place um, with this card hop. So I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by. Don't forget to check the links below. Hop on to the next uh, person in the card hop. Um, and uh, don't forget to go check out Courtney's video because she will be showcasing all of the cards for people who are 
fabulous card makers, but they don't have a channel to um, share with. So uh, again, thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a fabulous day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.